as a kid growing up in Belize, I didn't like trifle at all. I didn't like how dense the cake was, and I definitely didn't like the coconut flakes that's inside the cake. As I grew older though, my taste buds have changed, and now I love this unique dessert. Let's make Belizean trifle. You're watching the Bear Pantry Show. Normally this cake uses evaporated milk, but I'm going to use lactose-free milk because I'm lactose intolerant. So we're going to need butter, granulated white sugar, eggs, lemon extract, all-purpose flour, baking powder, the milk, and some sweetened coconut flakes. So we're going to start off first of all with the butter and we're going to need two sticks. It has to be softened to room temperature, but my house is still cold because we're not turning on the heater, so my butter is not really as soft as I would like it to be. So what I'm going to do first is just use my hand mixer to beat the butter for a little bit before I add the sugar. Just to give it a head start. So this is good. Let me go ahead and grab the sugar. And it's only a cup and a half of sugar. We're going to start with a half a cup. Put a little bit in because I want to avoid spattering on my camera. Let me go ahead and grab the cup. Put the sugar in a little bit at a time. Okay, that's good. Normally, creaming the butter and the sugar will only take about five to six minutes, but because the house is cold, it's gonna take closer to about seven to eight minutes. Scrape the spatula off as you go along. See how it's looking? It's getting creamy, guys. I'm scraping off my spatula yet again. And now it's time to add the eggs one at a time and just mix until each egg is well incorporated into the batter and there are four eggs. I'm going to scrape my bowl down again. When it comes to the thicker batters, that's when you have to scrape the bowl down more often. Now it's time for the last egg. The batter's looking pretty creamy, right? All right, so now it's time to add my lemon extract. I don't want to forget that because that really gives this cake a nice flavor. See how creamy this is? Let me scrape my bowl down one last time before we start messing with the dry ingredients. Scrape off the spatula. You don't want to leave the stuff on the spatula from the prior phase of the mixing. Right, you want to just clean it as you go along so that you don't have like dried stuff caked on the spatula towards the end of mixing the cake. So let me go ahead and add the baking powder into the flour and give it a whisk. I'm not adding any salt because my butter is salty, but if you're using an unsalted butter, by all means, add half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of salt. So I'm eyeballing a third of the dry ingredients. And the reason why I do this is because I don't want stuff to go flying on my camera. Don't forget to pick up your powder bun dry mix and remember I already have everything in here. All you have to do is add butter, egg and milk and you don't even have to add the egg if you're allergic or if you don't like egg, all right? Remember if you're not gonna put the egg, you're gonna put a little bit more milk. And if you don't wanna form them into the circles, you can make them into bars, you can customize them even more by adding raisin or dried cranberries or milk chocolate chips or white chocolate chips or both of them together or nuts, whatever you wanna add, all right? Pick up your dry mix today, guys. I want to shout out everyone who's been picking up their dry mix. Thank you guys for being such a great support to the show. So let me mix my dry ingredients in really well, scraping the bowl down again. And then I'm going to start by adding a third of the wet, which is the lactose-free milk. So, and I'm just going to eyeball, okay, to see what a third is. So let me grab the milk. All right, here we go. And I will list the ingredients down below in the description for you guys. This cake is going to be my cake book that I'm working on right now. Let's add some more of the dry ingredients. Another third of the flour and baking powder mixture. And then fold it in again before we start blending. Okay, and then 
We're going to scrape off the spatula yet again. It's kind of a tedious task, but it makes for a better cake, all right? So after adding all the ingredients, you want to go ahead and scrape off your beaters. And then I'm going to light the oven to 350. And I'm going to add my coconut flakes. Two cups, okay? Don't forget the coconut flakes. And then now we're going to fold. You don't want to use the hand mixer for this because the coconut flakes is just going to get knotted up in the beaters, you know? So just fold it in. See how thick this batter is? Now I'm going to pour it into a greased and floured 9 by 13 pan. Let me get it all out of the bowl. And then scrape off the spatula. And then spread out the batter. Make sure it's even. And this is the kind of batter that we can kind of knock down on the counter if we need to, all right? Now into the oven it goes. I'm going to set the timer for 30 minutes, but I know it's going to need more time. Meanwhile, let me show you what I do while the cake is baking. I have to clean up the stuff. I don't have anybody who comes in here and does this part for me. I mean, sometimes Joe and Josh will help with this, but for majority of the time, I'm the one that has to do my own cleanup. Making sure I get all the nooks and cranny of the spatula. What I'm doing here is trying to pull the rubber back a little bit to just get under the edge here because stuff will hide under there. Okay. Now let's do the bowl right away. If you wash your bowls right away, the stuff will not get hard on it and it'll make the task easier. Okay. We get some more soap. And wash it again. Now let's rinse it really well. And then now it's time to check on our cake, guys. Let's see. No, 30 minutes is not enough. Let's give it 15 more minutes for a total of 45 minutes. And look, see, it is done. Let's check it with the toothpick. Yep, it's clean. Once it's cooled down, I cut it up and I made this because I wanted to do a photo shoot for my book. See the cake in the background? I remember one of my mom's older brothers, Uncle Norman, used to always tease my mom whenever she would make a cake and it would come out a little bit too dense. He would ask, are you making trifle or are you making cake? So to me, trifle always had a negative connotation. To me, it meant like if you don't know how to make a great cake, then make the next best thing, which is trifle. And honestly, guys, it has a bad reputation because it's so good. This is all I have left. Let me tell you what I did. So in America, trifle is a dish that's kind of layered, right? So you put different things and layer the cake in between. So what I did, I grabbed two beautiful glasses. One looked like a trifle glass, but it's small. And I put Smucker's strawberry jam on the bottom. I cut the cake into the shape of the glass and dropped a piece in there. And I didn't have it as thick as this. This is how thick it is in the 9x13 pan. I cut it in half, okay? Then I made some birds custard on the stove top. And I put that for one of the layers and then I put cake again and I made some homemade whip topping and then just kind of decorated everything on top. And then I made another tumbler of it. That tumbler was taller. So for one of the layers, I put some cut up strawberries because I think traditionally that's how uh, trifle is served. Now, I wish that I could have just dived into one of those glasses and just eaten that thing like that. But because of the custard that's made with sweetened condensed milk and the whip topping that's made with heavy cream, I couldn't tolerate it because I am lactose intolerant and I've been having a difficult time this week with my stomach and so I didn't want anything to aggravate it, alright? So I didn't eat it. I just took everything out of those two glasses after I did my photo shoot and stacked it in a, um, a plastic container and sent it over to my neighbors. Well, the neighbor came to pick it up last night. She said, oh, this is going to go good with my pupusas today. So they didn't care that it was like not layered well because I had to try to, you know, 
transfer from one thing to the next thing but they thoroughly enjoyed it so my thing still is with the coconut flakes and I like coconut I can eat coconut just like that I love the water love the milk love the oil but the flakes that's why I don't care too much for like tart Belize and tart and stuff like that I'm not a great fan of the coconut flakes but they put too much mm -hmm. when it's first made the top and the bottom are crunchy but the next day like today is soft and sticky which is still good it's not too sweet you notice we put a lot of flour when I'm making my Belizean cake it's like two and a half cups of flour this is three and a third cups of flour to, uh, to only one and a half cup of sugar right the cake uses like two and something cup of sugar so it's not too sweet it's not as sweet as cake and you see it's kind of rough can you see that yeah it's kind of rough it's more like a, a tea cake or a coffee cake right it's delicious though so I save this for Joe and for me because I can eat it I put lactose milk after all and it still came out the thing stuck on my teeth it still came out good anyways guys I put it in a 9 by 13 pan because I've learned since I made one of my cookbooks with the trifle recipe in it that if the pan is too small I always did 9 by 9 because that's what the original recipe called for that's what will make the cake swell in the middle and crack I learned that when I was helping Jael of the village figure out that one cake that was giving her trouble so I put it in a 9 by 13 pan and it did not crack you guys saw beautiful beautiful didn't swell in the middle didn't crack so one theory proven right right so if you try this come back and let me know let me know what you put in it maybe you put some fruits maybe you put some nuts I don't know tell me what you put in it all right so don't forget to like the video if you like what I produce here today don't forget to share it out with your friends and family and I just want to give a great thank you to the people who have been reaching out to me lately because most of the time I get a lot of negative comments at my videos I don't know why people feel the need to come to a cooking video to tell you the million things that you are doing wrong rather than just get up off the couch and go make your own thing make your own video put it out there and I might actually watch and share it that's what I always tell people make your own video I'll watch and share it YouTube is for everybody right I don't put negative things on people's pages and I definitely don't go tell people that are cooking things that they're doing it wrong right people have come to tell me you've helped me a lot you know when I was a single and alone and didn't know what to cook I miss Belize I miss my mom and I've learned everything from you and I'm so grateful for you and that really has helped me over this past month because today as I'm recording this is February 29th and I've been sick from January 29th to February 29th from one thing to the next because I caught that stupid cold virus that gave me the sore throat and then it led to something else you know with <sighs> stomach issues just all type of stuff but praise God I'm back and those positive comments really helped me I didn't even go read comments for a while because if I got one negative comment it might have had me in tears because when you're sick and you're in pain you know so anyways guys thank you so much thank you for all the love okay I'll see you guys in the next video bye it's a leap here we're supposed to be blessed this year guys it's a whole leap year today's February 29th sucks for the people who are born today they won't see another birthday till four years mm. this is the Beth Andrew show